Well, hello, and welcome to I Love Gate today. And we are in London, back in London, talking about history tours and walking tours and so forth. And we're here with Nick Collinson. How are you? I'm very good, thanks, Matt. How are you? Fantastic. Thanks for joining us all the way out here. Oh, no problem at all. No problem. Although, of course, we know that the internet brings us so much closer together. Doesn't it just? <laughs> I love that. I know. Well, no, you've uh, uh, we've met you through some uh, some folks that we've interviewed in the past, including Dan Vo and so forth. And uh, but you guys are all in that same world: museum and heritage tours and walking tours, all focused with an LGBT angle. So, yeah, tell us a little about who you are, what you do. Yeah. Okay. So, um, in my day job, I work for English Heritage. Um, that's the, the uh, company that looks after. Um, all of the ancient monuments in England, basically. The most famous would be Stonehenge, um, uh, Hadrian's Wall, and there are 400 other sites. So I I work in the interpretation team there. So it's my job to sort of bring all the stories to life. I'm sort of the bridge between the historians and the curators, you know, the experts who know everything about the site and the audience. So it's about sort of translating all that I suppose, sort of scholarly knowledge into something that's a bit more digestible for everybody else. Um, And that's where my interest in sort of guiding came in. Um, I did a City of London guiding course a couple of years back. And um, being a gay man myself, I wanted to uh, highlight queer stories, basically, in London. So I've made that my focus. And at English Heritage, I've managed to, um, well, I set up a, uh, a group of people who uh, all want to bring to the forefront queer stories at our sites. I mean, we've got 400 sites and, yeah. you know, most of the queer histories have not been written about or not been spoken about for whatever reason. And it's just about trying to sort of resurface those yeah. and um, bring them to the fore. Well, I can't wait till, I mean, I've been to the UK uh, several times and uh, I've been to Hadrian's Wall, I've been to Stonehenge. And so now I can't wait till you're exciting me as like, I can't wait till we're able to do these things again. I'm going to have to make sure I connect with you while I'm there. So I, uh, oh, of course, yeah, please so I, do. So I see an angle of, of, of the UK that I've never seen before. Yeah, well, it's interesting. I mean, you find these stories everywhere. Yeah. Um, for example, Stonehenge, one of the first architect, ar- archaeological um, excavations that was done there was commissioned by a man called George Villiers, the yeah. first Duke of Buckingham, who was um, James the First's lover. Yeah. And there's a story there. Um, Hadrian's Wall, you know, we've got obviously Hadrian and his lover Antinous. Um, we can tell all the stories about that. I don't think, you know, Antinous never went there, but it's, a, it's an angle that we can use. And of course, all of the Roman, all of the Roman um, stuff, you know, like all the, all the classical, all the gods and everything have got all these stories that you can talk about. So it's, um, it's, it's there's so much work to be done. I love that. I'm only digressing for half a moment, but it, it, whenever I hear that, whenever you say that, it always reminds me of watching uh, Vikings, that series. I don't know if you guys had it there. And it was always captivating that you're, you're, uh, you're in a church an old church uh, in in uh, northern England, and they have this uh, they have this room full of things from the Romans, and they don't really know like what they even have or what they see because that was so far that was a thousand years before before that before they were there. So yeah, it gives you I, a remember perspective. I remember that. remember when they were in a bath, weren't they? They were in a Roman bath. I remember a scene when uh, one of the kings, one of the Saxon kings was in a Roman bath and they didn't really know anything about it. Yeah, it was a great shit show, wasn't it? Yeah, so, but now I'm revealing too much. I love these things, so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I watched that whole series and when you said that, it just totally brought me back. So, uh, but anyway, I digress. And, uh, but you've also done these with uh, some, uh, someone else that we've uh, interviewed recently with Oscar Lear, with um, uh, Oscar Lear. <laughs> I've done that twice now. It's an Andrew, easy mistake to make. Andrew Lear with Oscar Wilde Tours. But yeah, um, what, what are you doing with him? Yeah, so I was put in touch with Andrew through a colleague of mine um, who used to work at the v Museum here in London and then he moved to New York, was working at um, the Museum of Modern Art and he met Andrew because Andrew does these um, queer tours of the Met and uh, put me in touch with him. We didn't really get in touch until the beginning of lockdown really and um, the plans that we had initially were to do some sort of app which um, LGBTQ travellers could use 
to locate um, you know queer tours and things like that that are going on all over the world but um, because lockdown came along we basically did another thing and um, put together this series of uh, talks and tours virtual things online called zooming through queer culture yeah. and um, I did a talk a couple of months ago now uh, about um, queer Soho and Bloomsbury in London, wow. two areas of central London, which yeah. have quite rich queer stories to tell. Um, and that was great. It was brilliant. Um, and I'm writing another one at the moment, who I'm, I'm going to be doing it with Dan Vo, who you mentioned earlier, who you interviewed as well, um, about queer stately homes in Britain as well. Oh, wow. That's excellent. But that, uh, when you talk about zooming, zooming through queer, tr queer travel and queer history and all that, um, the con that concept being rather new, that's, uh, that's kind of been your way of pivoting and being relevant out there uh, until you're able to start bringing at least locals uh, back on these guided tours again, yes? Exactly, yeah. I mean, um, summertime is the main time for, you know, tour, tour groups and guided tours and getting out on the streets and showing showing visitors what it's all about here. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's uh, pretty quiet at the moment. If you go into <laughs> central London, it's like another place, you know. Yeah. You don't, I didn't realize how much we rely on tourism um, in this country. Well, I knew it was, I knew it was big, but you know, it, it's, 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 it's dead, you know, yeah. out, out there in London. So it's just about sort of reaching out to new audiences on Zoom. It's great that I can yeah, kind of, yeah. you know, to American people, for example. Exactly. Yeah. We're all very connected now. I mean, we've, we've been connected for over 25 years now on the internet, but I think, and I won't overdo this or I'll, or I'll go on forever, um, mm. but it's not just the connect connections, but now we're communicating. And so now we're actually able through, through th this and, and social media, and I would actually say even more so through Twitter than others, because at least Twitter, we can have a back and forth conversation or a, 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 a relationship versus others where we're just speaking at or to people. And yeah. I think that communicating has made all the difference in the world during this time. It really has. I think it's probably going to be one of the lasting legacies of this, this whole pandemic, isn't it? Is that um, we've realized how good uh, technology really is and how it can really work. We can use it to make it work, make it work for us. Yeah, it's the human condition. It, it shows the good and the bad. So uh, I'm, exactly. I personally try to focus more on the good. Me too, me too. I love that. Well, I do look forward to it. I travel to, uh, to London and the UK quite often and uh, under normal circumstances. So I do look forward to when I arrive there in London to being able to connect and uh, taking my husband and we'll go on one of your tours because we love things like that. Amazing. Well, you're always more than welcome. Well, and there's nothing, nothing beats meeting in the flesh, does it really? Yeah, I agree. So, well, thank you so much for being here with us. Well, thanks so much for having me, Matt. It's been great. Absolutely. I look forward to seeing you and have a great weekend. Then you take care. See you soon. Bye.